So we've got the Castle 24 RGB. This uh, computer has been on for about three, four hours, just idling. It's running the 9900K. Um, it's got a 2080 Ti in there, 32 gigabytes of 4266 meg, no, 4, 000, yeah, 4266 megahertz memory in there, uh, using a Godlight MSI um, Z390 motherboard, and the case is a Fractal Design case uh, S2. So Fractal Design Define S2. And um, the top is closed off and it's obviously cooling it, but this is what temperatures we are at at the moment. So, top temperature is saying 48 degrees, but I haven't done a stress test. So let's do the stress test right now and see how much it goes up to. This is a 240 AIO RGB one. And what you're hearing at the moment is the Fractal Define S2 fans. So there's three of them plus two on the deep cool. And as you can see, it's starting to hit 80 degrees for the top CPU. And the lowest CPU core was 66. But all of these, as a little graph, they're showing it's jumping about and stuff. So we'll just run this for 10 minutes and see how hot it gets. And also on the top of the case is closed off. So it's not even opened at all, it is actually closed off. Well, um, as you can see, the CPU is near enough hitting 100 degrees. It's just, it's CPU throttling as well, max at 22, overheating detected. Um, this is not good at all. This is really not good. As you can see down here, the motherboard and what else is there, and SSD, it kept cool on the motherboard, 42 and 41 degrees. Should be a little bit cooler. But you, you clearly can see the 9900K needs to be cooled. And let me open up the top and let's see what it does. But um, it's definitely thermal throttling. So now I've taken the top off of the case and see if the temperatures drop down a little bit. It was definitely clearly restricting it and making it hot in one hot space on the radiator. And the temperatures are now starting to drop. And then one spike up there. Oh my god, that is clearly dropping down in temperatures. So we've gone from 99 all the way down to like 70... What's the lowest one? 74, 76. But obviously it's going to take a while for it to get cooler. Because it's been running for hours all day with this top on. And now, if you look down to the bottom, there is no thermal throttling since I've taken off the top. And instead of me running this for 10 to 15 minutes, which would have been pretty not, well, it wouldn't have been good because it wouldn't have been fair to say, oh yeah, this cooler could do whatever without testing it properly. And as you can see, there's no thermal throttling, 0%, 100% uses of CPU. 33 minutes and counting. This cooler is, is decent. As you can look to the top, Temperatures are clearly dropped, clearly dropped down. So that makes me kind of happy because it's going to take at least half hour to cool that down. And it's already dropped down, CPU's at like 68 degrees. This is awesome. This is what I like to see from um, a cooler and a CPU stress testing at a high level. Most of you won't even run at this sort of pace. Obviously, if you're going to use it for video editing, then definitely. CPU throttling will obviously stop the CPU, but you can see this whole line across the CPU graph, and it's all just zagging in everywhere, and then now completely dead since I've been speaking to you. No thermal throttling, and the CPU is completely getting uh, cooler and cooler as we speak. So I can clearly recommend Deep Cools. Whoa! Castle 240 RGB. This also works with Threadripper. Now I can understand it. Now on the radiator at the top, I've got a 240, and at towards the back, I've had this covered over. So this is not a very clever idea from thermal um, from Fractal Designs point of view. 
But since I've taken the top off, the radiator has been able to breathe. There's no fans um, getting uh, blocked and it's breathing. So on this bottom here, where the MOSFET spaces are, chokes, they're all, um, was it was really, really proper hot spot here. But down this part, it wasn't really that hot. But then that's what was keeping it going, but it's still water that's going through a very thin normal radiator and it was actually going into the hot spot. Now I can feel this hot spot and it's nothing. Before it felt warm to touch, definitely. But now it's just like, it's breathing really well. Temperatures dropped down. I think we saw like low 60s now on the, at the moment with a stress test with this AIO cooler. This is the best AIO, yeah. This is the best AIO cooler that I've used so far that is not too loud and it's got the RGB but it's not the fans I would normally use and not sort of the AIO I would use but that castle long sort of pump and res seems to be doing really well. It's like it gives it the illusion that it's really big but maybe it's got a little extra headroom for cooling in it. Unless I took it apart I don't know but it's, it's pretty decent and as it can fit Threadripper as well and obviously AM4 and Intel products there's no problem. So this is saying high end desktop, so Core i9, Core i7, straight off the bat. And then um, everything here, AM sockets, so TR4, AM4, AM3+, AM3, AM2, all those CPUs, so anyone that's having problems. Someone was asking me the other day about their uh, FX chip that runs really hard, hot on an AMD CPU. Get this AIO if you're interested, or go with the Noctua, which is pretty ugly, but... It does what it's meant to do, it's performance uh, version. Anyway, so we got a decent airflow, so 69.34 CFM. And noise ratio, I've got that fan, well, I've got two fans, three fans, from front of design, and then two on the, R on the yeah, RGB front, and that's not too bad. But yeah, other than that, it's got loads of cables, um, it fits everything, you've got an RG, if you haven't got an RGB motherboard, it comes with an RGB remote control that you can control pretty easy by plus and minus, and then in different modes of cycling. I've got this plugged in into my motherboard so I can just do all the mystic light and everything like that. And this is for Asus Aura Sync, it's got on the side there, but it works really well. Um, it's got a copper base as well, some bearings and that. Easy to install, um, kind of, I would say, more of an intermediate level. Because there's three ways that you can add it. Oh, and that's another thing as well. With the deep cool, um, the actual castle, the actual pump and res, all in one. The actual sign, so this sign is the wrong way up in this case. But if I had to take it apart, it would take ages. I have to undo like all the AIO, take all the um, cables out, because I had to put the motherboard in there after I, I put the cables in first. So I had to put this the PWM fan cables, a couple of DCM fa uh, DC uh, cables. Had to put um, two eight-pin EPS connectors in, two PCI. Uh, graphic card cables, a 24 pin cable, and I ain't using any, um, what was it, solid state drives or anything like that, I'm just using everything else. And I'll tell you what, it's, I think, oh, oh yeah, I need to put in um, a USB 3.1 in there as well, and USB, I think USB 3's in there. Yeah, USB 3's in there as well. The whole thing is just a mission to undo it. And in all the cable management I've done, we had to undo it. So, didn't bother, I just left it upside down. But if Deep Core are listening, which they really will be, is that, can you put something that indicates which way the actual face goes up on the actual, uh, what's it called, the castle? Because what it is, is that it doesn't have any illumination on or anything like that. All you get is this plastic see-through thing which is here, that covers it up from getting scratched, but there's no indication of which way it's meant to go up or down. And it would be nice to have that. You can have it three different ways. It says for extended motherboards and mini ITX and all that sort of stuff, the way that it's meant to be rotated in the manual, but it doesn't have it on the actual block, so you can't see which way it's already situated. So when I'm thinking it's right, I'll go to put it in, set it all up, and it's wrong. But I'm not about to turn, take it around. But as you can see, it's still clearly working very well. But in my eyes, if you're going to do something, do it right. But I'm just letting you guys know that. So if you can, test it, 
kind of the right way with like plugging it in first. And talking about testing it, it has got loads of cables that go off into it. It's got like two, three, four cables that go off and connect the fans up to the RGB. Then you've got one that connects to the CPU, you've got one that connects to the 5 volt, and I think you've got a 12 volt cable as well. Um, it depends on how your motherboard is, and then you've got the other cable that can connect and control the mother, um, not the motherboard, to control the AIO RGB lights without uh, connecting it to an RGB motherboard. But if you do, then you can have it synced and use that software, and then a cable for the power. So, not too much. It's got quite a few cables in there, but it's got everything that's pretty situated in the box, and it's just simple. But it's not that simple if you are an in, if you're not an intermediate builder. So I would say it's a great to have, but it will take longer if you're a beginner. But if you're intermediate, it'll still take you quite a long time. But at least you'll be comfortable with it. And if you're a pro, then it'll be fine. But if you're a pro, then technically you might not be using this, or you might be using it. It depends if you're putting it in for, uh, someone else's system. But other than that, it is pretty. It's better than the Asus, my Asus Ryogen, it's better than that. I don't even know where that even is. I took that out and that beats it. And it's a 240. Let's have a look at the temperatures now. Right, so the lowest core was like 66 degrees and the highest core was like 80 degrees. And this is on a full stress test with the computer being on for four hours, then stress tested and stress tested for like over half hour after leaving it on for that long just so the CPU would warm up <coughs> and we get decent thermals around inside the case and what's even more funny we have this on top as well so blocking airflow so this is a pretty crappy idea Mr Fractal uh, Design this is not a good idea at all unless you're no it's not a good idea actually because all the MOSFETs and phases and chokes all that heat is blowing upwards right next to the top and it's being choked. So, not a great idea. And also, I've got a complete line of no throttling now. It's completely, completely gone. But one thing I need to check is how, how um, if this CPU is overclocked or not. Because I did take it apart and I'm sure I did reset it. I can't remember, so I'll have a look at that right now. So at the moment, it's overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz, which is not... That's on all cores, so I've gone down from 4.5, 5.4 even, all the way down to 4.8, and it's been running a stress test. So easily I'll be able to run this on Prime 95 with it the way it is now, and it'll be stable with that slight overclock. But then I'm thinking, if I literally, if I overclocked it, i still got headroom on here. But I know the voltage is slightly higher than what it should be because I just literally just wanted to do a video and I think it was like the ultimate gaming rig and everything with everything set up. But I've just left, I, I didn't tamper around in a BIOS and drop the voltage down. So technically the voltage is slightly higher. I think the voltage is running at 1.35 volts. So on 4.8 it's not needed. And that means that it's even better at cooling than what it should be. So kudos to them. Anyway. If you want to ask me any questions, um, go ahead and ask the questions down in the comments down below. I'll ask them for you, no problem. I love hearing your feedback and listening to you guys down there. You make me happy. Anyway, um, subscribe, share and all that sort of stuff. And follow me on all social media platforms. And there's a merch store down below to get your favourite hoodies or t-shirts or anything like that. Mugs and all that sort of stuff. And if you're a female as well, there's uh, stuff down there for you like that so that's pretty cool and um, yeah that helps support the channel and anything you've seen here it'll be related down in the bottom so you can go and purchase it if you choose to and it helps give me a little kickback too so I'm Roger and I'm out see you later so if we look down to the bottom here you can see that's the last bit of spike and all that talking that I've done for 15 or 16 minutes because it's 46 minutes it's been running for for a stress test there's been no thermal throttling at all. That's the last thermal throttle. And that's when I took the top off and it's done that and it's kept cool. And if you look to the top, this is idle. And then this was all running for uh, hours, for like four hours, four hours and a bit. And then this is all with the stress test. So warming right through the whole computer, make sure get a nice decent bit of heat. And then it shot straight up 
and then it started throttling all from here. And then when I took the top off, that's what happened. And that's still going right now. Lowest core, 66. Highest core, 80 degrees with overclocked. Now, if I stop it, let's see how much it drops down to. And you can see it's dropped straight down into the 40s. Highest core, 47 degrees. Brilliant. 